Kerbal Space Program is a massive game with hundreds of settings that make it incredibly intimidating. In this video, I will show you how to turn on 5 amazing settings that will improve your gameplay experience. Kicking things off with our honorable mention, this setting is called Maneuver Mode, and it was actually added quite recently in version number 1.7. It can be activated by clicking the purple button next to your pitch, yaw, and roll input indicator. During flight, it can be set to three different modes. The far left tab tells you basic orbital information, like periapsis height and apoapsis height. The middle tab provides you with some advanced orbital information, like your eccentricity and the argument of your periapsis. Finally, the farthest right tab will tell you your approach distances. Also, while you're editing maneuver nodes with maneuver mode open, a precise note editor will pop up at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. It allows you to change the sensitivity, of this second maneuver node icon and is easier to access than the primary maneuver node because it will always be at the bottom left of your screen. Coming in at number 5 on our list, we have the extended burn time indicator. It's a setting that calculates when you should start your burns for you. It can be turned on at the bottom of the gameplay settings that can be accessed by clicking escape while you're anywhere in the game. Once it's on, underneath every maneuver node you make will be a little number telling you when to start your burns. Next up, we have the minimum quick save altitude. As of fairly recently, Kerbal Space Program will prevent you from quick saving when you are near the ground. This was added with the good intention of preventing people from quick saving right before crashing into the ground, which is a problem that many people complained about. However, the minimum quick save altitude is much too high. I'm not going to crash into the ground when I'm 100 meters above the ground, let alone at 500 meters. If you enter the settings.cfg file located within the Kerbal Space Program folder, you should be able to see a long list of settings that can be modified for Kerbal Space Program. After opening these settings, if you click Ctrl F or Command F if you have a Mac, set direction to down, and search for quick save, then you will find a section that reads minimum quick save altitude. Set that to whatever value you want. I set it to 50 because I think that makes much more sense than 500. Coming in at number 3 on our list, we have the Conic Patch Limit. This is the number of Sphere of Influence changes you can see on the map screen. By default, this number is set to 3, but that really doesn't help you in situations where you want to do Tylo Gravity Assists, because when you do a Tylo Assist to get captured at Jewel, the fourth Sphere of Influence change is your actual Jewel orbit, which is by far the most important orbital line. This can be edited in the settings.cfg file, but it is under Conic Patch Limit rather than Minimum Quick Save Altitude. Okay, these final two items on my list are both great Kerbal Space Program features, so stick around for the very end of this video. Anyway, this second to last feature is a gameplay improvement rather than a feature that gives you additional information, and it is the Kerbal G-Force Limit feature. It allows Kerbals to black out while you are flying around the majestic skies of Kerbin. I really like this feature because it adds more depth to when you are flying around Kerbin. It's another thing to pay attention to. Also, it gives you an actual incentive to use pilot kerbals over engineers or scientist kerbals. Normally, people just use scientists when flying around Kerbin, because as long as you have a connection to the comnet, they are just better than pilots. However, with this feature turned on, scientists will black out faster than pilots, so people will actually use their pilots. Finally, we have a feature that most people complain about, even though it can be easily changed in the game settings. Yes, I'm talking about rover wheel controls. Everybody complains about them being controlled by W, A, S, and D. In the settings menu on the KSB homepage, there is a section called Inputs. The Inputs page has a subsection titled Vessels. At the very bottom of that page, there's another subsection titled The Wheels. If you click on the letters that are currently being used to control your wheels, a pop-up will appear. Then press the key on your keyboard that you want to use to control wheels with. Then click Accept. Repeat this process for drive forwards, drive backwards, steer left, and steer right. And that's the end of the video. If you found it helpful, consider liking and subscribing. If you have any other features that I left out, then please feel free to mention them in the comments. Have a nice day and don't die.